Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. We are here at an unusual destination, the supermarket. Why? Well, we're gonna go get some trail food. sorts of food here and what is exciting about all of this food is it is entirely plant-based so there are no animal products in this food at all we're going to be diving into a tray all day breakfast lunch slash snacks evening meals and drinks and how you can have a more compassionate and nutritious diet when you're out and about hiking backpacking or traveling now i have a plant-based diet hence why i wanted to make this video i feel like veganism and plant-basedness is coming into the outdoor scene a lot more people are exploring how they can be more sensitive to the environment and i definitely believe that you know as outdoor users we have a role as stewards to help um, nurture protect conserve the natural spaces that we love and enjoy as well and free food is one of the ways we can do that now if you are an avid animal eater you can still watch this video <laughs> because i'm really hoping that um, <clears throat> you can take away some interesting thoughts and food for thought about nutrition and how actually you know when we're on the trail it's very tempting to just eat sugars and carbohydrates and just keep ourselves fueled and that's really important but to actually sustain ourselves in a wholesome way getting good quality nutrition into our body not just our macronutrients so our carbs proteins and fats but our micronutrients you know there's vitamins and minerals can help us keep going to stay in the best mental space to function and navigate and enjoy everything that we're doing and to keep our body going as well. If you do have something bad to say, I really just ask that you can keep it to yourself. I know that sort of the diet world has a lot of strongly opinionated people. Spend More Time in the Wild is a channel that's all about educating, empowering and uplifting. And so long as your comments do that, then please feel free to comment below on what you guys like to eat on the trail. And without further ado, we are gonna jump into breakfast. Just as a wee side note, I am training in nutritional therapy, but if you're looking to change up your diet, please speak to a nutritional expert beforehand. So have a think about what you normally eat on the trail for breakfast. You may or may not have breakfast. You might go down the porridge route or there might be something else. For those of you guys who like porridge, I'm gonna jump into that first. So when I first started hiking, I used to have these porridge sachets. They're pretty simple. They're usually just oats and sugar. Um, you just pour it into your bowl, add some water, stir it, stir it, stir and you've got a meal right there. Super light, super compact, super squashable, um, but yeah. So I used to start with those, they're great. I'd have one or two of those for breakfast. They'd keep me going um, until it was snack time, which was basically straight after breakfast, but that aside, they'd keep me going. And a little bit further on into my backpacking journey, I sort of decided that actually, do you know what? I'm creating a lot of waste with these packets. If I'm doing a long trail, I don't know, a few weeks, that's, that's a few weeks worth of packets. So I decided why not just make my own? And so this is a packet of porridge that I made. It's exactly the same. It's basically just oats and sugar. And uh, yeah, when it comes to making your own porridge, it's so simple. You can't overcomplicate it. Basically, you get some oats, you buy a big bag of oats for, I don't know, a pound 80p, um, measure out pheasant measure out 50 grams or so add some sugar of your choice might be brown sugar white sugar coconut sugar um, <clears throat> add some dried berries some dried seeds some dried nuts you know linseed is great when you're on the trail because that really helps to mitigate constipation and let's be real we don't want to talk about it but most of us experience it <laughs> whether we're hiking or traveling it happens so <clears throat> what's so cool about this as well you've made your own porridge dooby dooby doo you've eaten it you then just have a plastic bag you can then reuse that plastic bag happy days so we've mitigated the waste from this to this so you can either use the plastic bag sort of as a toilet bag to pick up your loo roll and put stuff in there and then trash it um so it's just got a little bit more of a usage in life or you know you can just reuse it and keep making porridge in there super super simple so yeah i like to make my own porridge anyway um other things people do for breakfast other examples are you know you might want to have a trail mix so again a trail mix we're going to come on to that a bit later but often involves dried fruits um dried nuts you might just want to chuck some in a bag um like this <laughs> uh and just have some you know figs some dates some different berries blueberries uh goji berries cranberries i mean 
take the pick. <laughs> There's so many out there, some different nuts um, and seeds. So trail mix is super easy to make we'll talk about that again in a bit so there's all sorts of different bars out there this is one i wanted to give a big shout out to deliciously ella they're made in the uk they're the first company in the uk to make well produce 100 percent recyclable packaging as well so that kind of mitigates again the issue with the porridge so that's super cool but again going for a breakfast bar or a cereal bar especially if it's 100 percent plant-based like i don't know dates cashews that sort of thing Again, you're going to be getting the fiber in there as well as the carbohydrates, the fats, the proteins. So the fiber is obviously going to be really great to help your digestion continue in its appropriate form. <laughs> I will leave that there. And then what I've got here is an example of if you've got a bit more of a budget to play with, and we're going to talk about money, the money side of things in a little bit, then you can buy ready-made vegan or plant-based meals as well for breakfast. So tent meals have some really good options. I freaking love tent meals. Um, how cool is this bag? It's like a breakfast, breakfast in a fist, a breakfast. So it's 500 calories, it weighs 123 grams. Um, that's a lot of calories, let's just put it that way. You can make it with hot water or cold water. Just pop it in your pot, do 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 stir, 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 and then eat away. So this is cashew and goji berries, but they have so many different ones out there as well. Um, cool little bags that you can reuse as well. And then of course, fresh fruit. Um, so if you're hiking through a town, Obviously, don't be afraid to pick up fresh fruit. I know it's a little bit heavier, but nothing is gonna beat the nutrition that you get in a banana, in a kiwi, in an apple, in an orange, and you don't have to carry it for very long. In fact, it might not even be eaten for breakfast. You could eat it for lunch as well. That's gonna be that segue into lunch. Now, obviously there is the conversation of food miles with these guys, but um, that's up to you. I just wanted to throw that in there. Bananas are good. <laughs> just working on my second breakfast. Oh, vitamin C, how I need this stuff. <laughs> oh, that's so good. All right, let's talk about during the day. Before we done with the day. <laughs> let's talk about during the day. So there's various things you can do for lunch. And again, day hiking is gonna look different to sort of a couple of nights on the trail to something longer. If you're day hiking, you're probably gonna take a sandwich and we'll come to sort of pleasant come to that sort of side of things in a bit but generally for me when I'm hiking particularly long distance it tends to be more snacky and lunch sort of starts once breakfast finished <laughs> um, I graze throughout the day and it sort of just keeps me going it keeps me sustained so I have all sorts of different options here because I think this is where people can feel thrown now there's a lot of packaging here as well so that's where research into your companies can be helpful to make sure again you're sort of watching that packaging side of things but we talked about trail mix during the breakfast let's start there so trail mix essentially is like a pick and mix um, so it can be anything sort of nut based or seed based or dried fruit based so i've got examples here you can get some apple rings you know dried mango dried cranberries dried blueberries dried prunes i mean that's the fruit side of things and there's so much more out there um, you can buy little trail mixes as well so they can all be combined as one if that's a cheaper way of doing it and then <coughs> nuts all sorts of different nuts Obviously, if you have a nut allergy, that's a bit sad, but nuts can seem expensive. And actually, this is a nice transition point to sort of talk about the money side of things. Um, if you're finding buying little packets of nuts just feels, I don't know, unsustainable, then what you can do is you can go to bigger companies such as Grape Tree or Whole Foods or whatever, and you can buy things in bulk. So if you know you're going to be hiking X, Y, Z in a year, then why not buy like a kilogram? Of cashews a kilogram of something else and then just make your trail mix from that and that tends to be what we do is is make our own um i eat a lot of nuts let's just be completely honest <laughs> like these these get eaten very quickly but um you can chuck anything in a trail mix and so long as it's plant-based you know you're going to be getting your fibers your proteins your fats in there as well so i'm a big fan of trail mix that's for sure So we talked about fruit as well at breakfast, so why not use it at lunchtime or throughout the day? So apples, bananas, kiwis, oranges, anything that takes your fancy. You know, if you're going for a town and you can get something, then why not? The other side is foraging. So there's loads of things you can pick when you're on the trail, particularly in late summer and autumn. Things like bilberries and raspberries and strawberries, um, <coughs> different apples off the trees and pears and 
peaches and whatever it is you can probably find them where, wherever you're hiking unless it's like Svalbard or Greenland <laughs> but um just make sure you've got your foraging knowledge in there that's my little disclaimer don't poison yourself because that would be very sad but you know I'm, I'm, I'm never afraid to carry an apple with me because it just gives me a big smile and every crunch and bite um so yeah fresh fruit is always a good way to go as well when you're out hiking on the trail we're in this like wooded stretch and we just found some raspberries they're not quite ready though which is super sad see here mm. why are raspberries so good oh, there's loads in there <laughs> Mm. That's just what you need on a hot day. A sweet peach. It's so good. All right, let's talk about bars. So there's an endless array of bars and basically, you know, you can you can buy a bar or you can make your own. So first of all, before you go any further, definitely have a look at our bar recipe and our energy ball recipes. Um, super, super great when you're on the trail. I flipping love our energy balls. They're basically coconut, date and nuts all crunched into a ball. And it's delicious but if you don't want to make your own then you know again all sorts of different stuff you can buy and I've got a few examples here of some different brands I'm not advertising any brand in particular I'm just showing you what's available so you've got some eat natural we've got greys we've got nine bars we've got the primal pantry we've got littles we've got naked bars we've got delicious the Ella the list goes on and what's good about all of these is they're all 100% plant-based. Now, the prices vary a lot and this is where shopping around can be very helpful. So for example, the Primal bars here, they cost 50p each. The Littles bars here cost 25p each. Homemade bars, well, depends how cheaply you get your produce. But essentially, shopping around can be really good for these. Again, buying in bulk and checking the reduced section. So just because it says something is going to go on X date doesn't mean a couple of days later you have to chuck it away. Sometimes it does, but not necessarily. <laughs> so, you know, when things are vacuum sealed, definitely give it the benefit of the doubt. And uh, yeah, check the reduced section because you can get yourself some good bargains. Mm, that is good taste. One of my favorite things to eat when I'm on the trail or to at least pick up when I go through somewhere on the trail is flapjack uh, big flapjack fan here basically for those of you guys outside of the uk flapjack is like a bar of oats again um <laughs> oats feature a lot in my life but it's sort of very sugary and compact and generally quite heavy actually um a lot of flapjacks have butter in but a lot don't this one doesn't so i can eat this happy days really enjoy the flapjack and then speaking of oats to sort of round up the oat side of things oat cakes so again oat cakes are traditionally scottish i think those sort of compressed oats they are savory but you can put stuff on them and uh i actually just quite like plain old oat cakes but you can get seeded ones as well and obviously this is a packet i don't know last a day or whatever it's got a few in there so oat cakes great source of carbohydrate and uh hopefully keep you fueled for a longer period of time and that brings us into our savory section of the lunchtime conversation <laughs> Basically, every time I turn the camera off, these just come out behind the scenes right now. <laughs> Oat cakes, that's about it. <laughs> Alrighty, so savoury is a way some people prefer to go down. Generally, you know, it involves more salt than sugar. Salt is really great because obviously that's going to help replace the salts that are being sweated out, even if it's just simple table salt. Um, now, it's interesting because you know, with regards to the trail mix, some people like to sort of keep that sweet and some people make it salty. For example, where I make my own trail mix, we make the most delicious um, roasted and salted almonds. And we made some in Italy. You can see that video as well, how to do that. Chuck them in the trail mix and they don't last very long. Let's just be completely honest. <laughs> but if you don't want to make your own, there's some really great companies out there like Mr. Filbert's. So they've got some Indonesian pepper cashews and some French rosemary almonds and then chili and fennel mixed nuts and then sea salt and herbed mixed nuts they've got all sorts of things going on these are just mind-blowingly delicious again don't last very long uh, but they're really so convenient to carry on the trail whether you're day hiking or not and actually speaking of mr filberts i just love this company because everything is really you know environmentally sourced it's it's fair trade and sustainable they literally hand pick their wild garlic for their produce these are their olives as well they've got Ugh, green and black olives all sourced from small companies so they're helping small small companies you know across the world 
flipping love it. Olives are great for the trail as well. So there we go. That's my little shout out to them because I just think their ethics are great. You know, they're working on getting recyclable packaging as well. But then other companies where you can get um, sort of salted stuff, things like pistachios, was a bag from Lidl's. <laughs> so what you're noticing about all of these things is generally speaking, it's stuff you can find anywhere, whether it's a small local shop or whether it's a, just a big supermarket, wherever you're going for, you're gonna find something along these lines. Might not be the same brand, but it's gonna be something similar. Um, you know, you might find something like this, which is a little bit rarer. We're not having beef jerky in this diet, but vegetarian jerky or veggie jerky is a good way to go. So that's based on soya um, products and uh, I'm sure somebody's gonna say something about soya. <laughs> But uh, yeah, basically soya with all different flavors in there. And, you know, generally speaking, soya that goes into human food does come from good sources as well. It's got a low environmental impact. So don't tend to worry too much about that. Pretzels can be a really great way to go. If you don't want to carry a big bag of pretzels then you can get a little one like this, this is pretzel balls. And speaking of pretzels, I have to admit, I discovered them in the summer of 2020, hiking in the Bavarian Alps, like properly discovered them it was like a whole new planet of pretzelness they dunk very well in hummus i'm just gonna add that you know you can buy hummus in most places as well <laughs> and that's just chickpea mush so hummus uh no pretzels and hummus you know go very well together and can be a really great choice uh get some salts in there get that carbohydrate really affordable cheap you know usually less than a pound per bag so gotta get the pretzels in there and then you know, we talked about oat cakes earlier. We can go down sort of the nut butter route. I know it's a bit extreme, but actually carrying a pot of nut butter is not a bad idea, especially if it's like a plastic squeezy bottle. Um, <clears throat> it's got that fiber, it's got the protein. And you know, the reason why I actually dared to put this in the conversation today is because on the Camino, it's very traditional for people to carry a jar of jam and then they just buy bread and then they've always got food on there, jam and bread. Mm. Also jam, jam's vegan, there you go. <laughs> Just berries and sugar. So um, yeah, nut butters are a good way to go. Now there's lots of things we can use as bases when we're hiking as well that don't have to cost us our wallet and cost us our backs and our well-being because they're super heavy. Um, so things like wraps and pita breads can be a really good way to go. You know, especially if you're going through different places. You know, most hikes in the UK go through some kind of village at least every other day. And you can pick up things like avocados or jams or. Um, I was going to say chocolate spread, not chocolate spread, but, uh, nut butter spreads, <laughs> uh, spinach, hummus, anything like that. You can whip it in one of these guys and actually get a really good nutritious meal. Things like rice cakes, these are really, really, really light. And most people say they taste like cardboard, but if you put stuff on them, then they don't taste like cardboard. You can get like rye breads or crisp breads like this. There's endless products out there that you can put things on, use as a base. You're going to get that fiber in, that carbohydrate, that fats, that proteins. I keep going on about it because it's so important to think about keeping our body nutritionally fueled when we're on the trail and not just straight away jumping into the sugar. However, talking of sugar, we're going to jump back a little bit to that now. So there is definitely a time and place for eating processed sugars. I have to say, I don't really eat many processed sugars off the trail. So when I eat them on the trail, I'm like buzzing around like a bumblebee, like <laughs> all the energy. <laughs> um, so biscuits, you know, so many biscuits are actually plant-based. They don't have butters in, they don't have honey in. Most oat biscuits, again, oaties and stuff like that, um, you can find in stores. They're really quite cheap and uh, they're a really good way to go to keep your body fueled and energized, get yourself a hit of sugar when you need it. Uh, things like fudges as well. You can get vegan fudges out there, which sounds quite um, opposite to fudge, but something like the Melting Pot, they've got vegan fudges. This is cream coconut and honeycomb. Again, this stuff doesn't last very long, but for the calories per weight, so it's 90 grams and for 100 grams, there are 450 calories. So you're probably getting, I don't know, 400 calories in that that block right there. So that's pure, pure energy. And then all sorts of biscuits. And then just again, savory biscuits like this guy. I don't even know what this is. Crackers, sesame seeds, poppies. So <laughs> what I'm sort of getting at with this lunch slash snack section is there is so much you can look at and explore. Whatever your tastes are, whatever you enjoy, whatever you want to carry, wherever you are in the world, there's going to be some kind of variation of fresh produce, stuff you can forage, of salted stuff, of biscuits, of, of cookies, <laughs> of oat cakes, 
anything. I mean, what are these guys? These aren't even macaroons and they've even got vegan chocolate that's melting in the sunshine, but you can buy these as well. <laughs> so most things that are non-vegan or non-plant-based because they have an animal product in them can be found in a plant-based product as well. All right, just taking a quick break. Now I've got this stuff, vegan fudge. It is so good, this Madagascan vanilla flavor. Oh boy, it's uh, hard to make this stuff last, but seriously, it's so good. <laughs> Just gotta take a little bit, you know. You could just chow it down, but <laughs> you really feel the energy kick from this. Mm. And it's so good. So many different flavors, but I think this is one of my favorite. Mmm, ma'am. Alrighty, so our penultimate section, and that is evening meals. Now, this is where it can stress some people out and actually can empty people's pockets the quickest because I think it's very common in the backpacking world for people to go down the ration pack sort of section. So, ration pack or trail pack, whatever you want to call it. And there's all sorts of different brands out there. So, some very well known uh, brands that do vegan produce. Speaking of bumblebee, there's a bumblebee right there. <laughs> um, a fire pot is real tarmat, is something to eat. They've all got um, basically no animal products in them. I really like Firepot actually, because you pay a little bit extra, sadly, but you can pay a little bit extra and get again, recyclable packaging. Uh, but all you do with this stuff, if you're unfamiliar, it's really lightweight. So this weighs, what does this weigh? 130 grams, um, open it up, add some hot water, seethe it up, let it sit for a bit and you've got a proper 525 calorie meal there. So that's 525. This one here, <clears throat> 589. Oops, sorry, Bumblebee. And uh, this one here, 510. So they're all pretty high calorie. The only thing with those is they, they do cost quite a lot. So generally, those are sort of 7 to 12 pound a meal. I mean, that is a meal out. Um, if you want to go slightly cheaper, but also it's going to be a little bit heavier, things like this. So this is a boil in the bag. This is Wayfarer, um, groups such as DOV. It's a adventure thing in the uk for young people they use these so this one weighs what does this weigh <laughs> i don't mean they even want to put the weight on it but essentially it's just it's mush like it's not dehydrated it's you just have a pot a hot boiling pot you put it in and it just warms it up and then that's your meal so it's going to be a lot well it is ah, 300 grams there you go it's literally twice as much as a dehydrated one and then <coughs> as for calories yeah, 300 calories in that. So less calories for more weight. Most people don't want to do that, but it is a little bit cheaper. I mentioned eating out. That's definitely an option to go down. And it's funny because Anna and I were talking about it the other day, how, you know, traditionally pubs in, in England and Wales and Scotland are very grubby, you know, in a sense that there's hearty food, it's got animals, it's meat, you know, and that's fine because that's your tradition. But many are actually catering towards vegetarian and vegan dishes as well. And I definitely recommend just putting in a little bit of preparation if that's something that you think you might want to try and do, at least to treat yourself once along a route. Just ring ahead or look at their menu on their website. It doesn't take very long, but it's an opportunity for you to sort of think about your nutrition and to treat yourself as well. Soup. Man, that is legendary soup. Some other ideas, because that's basically all we're doing, is exploring all of the ideas. Are things like these, these are usually like a pound a packet and basically it's just rice or couscous or whatever. Again, quite heavy, this weighs 250 grams, but it's supposed to be for the microwave, but we've done it in water and it works absolutely fine. It's got all the flavors in there. And then I mentioned couscous. Couscous is a really great way to go. I freaking love couscous. So little packets like this, you just add hot water in a pan to the couscous and it's just gonna absorb it and be super delicious and yummy. So sun-dried tomato, tomato and chili, my favorite roasted vegetable, can't be dealing with that chili. <laughs> so all sorts of options. And then there's the conversation of making your own evening meals as well. And couscous is a really great base to start with. Noodles is a really great space to start with, especially if it's not um, egg noodles, it's just carbohydrate noodles, uh, flour noodles, whatever, buckwheat noodles, whatever you're willing to carry and investigate, you know, 
And then there's options. If you're picking wild garlic when you're out hiking, you can add some seasoning and flavor from things you forage. And then you could also just carry a little bottle of um, sauce or of different herbs and spices that you can mix to your evening meals. So many options, don't be afraid to experiment. Normally when I'm on the trail, I eat uh, ration packs that are dehydrated. So this is real termat. This is ridiculously light. I mean, this weighs 121 grams. Uh, it's got 400, uh, no, 509 calories in it. So that's a decent chunk. You see how it's really compact there, packs away super nicely in the bag. But when you're on a short trail like this, um, you can bring luxury items because you only have to carry them for a day or two. And so we brought these. So this is just some random rice thing peruvian style it literally weighs double 220 grams so in theory i could have two ration packs and a little bit extra for the weight of this but it's kind of exciting because we can just eat these straight out of the packet and it's something with a little bit more nutrition so let's see how we get on with these to just give you an idea of what or how compact a meal could be if you made it yourself again tent meals doo -doo 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 -doo. look how small this is man again 500 calories it weighs 128 grams just like that, this is a Moroccan main meal. So basically, hearty Moroccan spiced couscous bursting with juicy mango pieces, jumbo raisins, apricots, and walnuts. Right there, 100% natural ingredients, packaged in the UK, super, super cool. You can make your own of these at home, just like that. So evening meals, the horizon is your limit and beyond. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's it, there's so many options for whatever your tastes are, whatever your preferences are. And again, whatever your budget is as well. But you can really make all of this affordable no matter what you've got to spend and that brings us on to our final section and that is drinks to be completely transparent with you drinks is where i struggle the most to keep the plant-based nuts when i'm on the trail and that's because i don't want to carry one of these around with me so this is soya milk that's generally what i have when i'm, I'm home soya oat almond coconut we mix and match but generally soya for most things um and i love tea you know i'm a proper teapot <laughs> throughout the day tea is the way you know <laughs> um but basically if i'm hiking and you know i'll always carry some like english tea bags which you add milk to um, so I want to pick up some milk. So basically I either buy one of these guys if they have them and this is still some like all of this stuff you can generally find the plant-based milks is still very slow to sort of reach the fringes of civilization. <laughs> um, so that's where I might buy some cow's milk. Um, I'll sort of just lean into myself and see how I'm feeling. But I want to be transparent with you because again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I do and opening the door for a conversation and adaptation wherever you want to. So soy milk is a way to go. You can also buy powdered soy milk and powdered coconut milk. I don't have any products to show you because I'm still experimenting and finding some, but keep an eye out for that because they might pop up in films at some point. But otherwise, if you're not an English tea drinker, here's a selection of other things you can have. That didn't go as planned. So these are herbal teas. There's all sorts of different ones here. Um, I tried to get some different brands to show you, but that's just organic white tea. That is coconut strawberry strawberry flavor that is vanilla chai one of my favorite that is a cleansing tea that is what is this star and anise is that how you say that anise there you go and cinnamon anna's over there so she's very helpful <laughs> um chamomile vanilla uh ginger nighttime tea whatever it doesn't really matter what you go for there's herbal teas till the world is over in, in on this planet. So just experiment with herbal teas and basically those you just add water in. Um, and what I like about the tea idea or tea front side of things is it's a nice way to get liquids in uh, in the morning and the evening, particularly if it's quite cold, you're gonna wanna drink something warm. <laughs> so I quite enjoy a herbal tea or an English tea. And of course, coffee, black coffee is obviously plant-based. And again, you can add some powdered milk if you've got it or soy milk or whatever option you're going for and then things like multivitamins i also carry these not necessarily a whole tube but multivitamins or electrolyte drinks you know they just keep my body boosted and going when i'm hiking um, <clears throat> and can be super helpful and there's one other thing i want to talk about just before we wrap up this video so i just need to get some electrolytes in me and then i'll get my boots off so i forgot that i was carrying these so they're elite electrolytes so you just literally add a drop or whatever it is like half a cup um, half a lid it measures it all you can just peel off the back and it tells you the measurements so I've had those for a couple of days 
And then I've also got this tube here. So it's covered in duct tape and electric tape in case I need it. But basically it's got electrolyte tablets in and multivitamins. So I'm gonna take one of these electrolyte tablets. So you just put it in water and let it fizz away and it's got a nice flavor to it. And then I'm also actually gonna take some of these drops as well. Cause I think I just need to get stuff in me. So we'll do that and then boot off. And that is these guys. These are yeast flakes or nutritional yeast flakes. Probably sounds a bit out there, but essentially Njavita, I think that's how you say it. <laughs> uh, I live off these guys, the, oh, Matt, can I just, moment. Oh, jeez, so good. So basically they are, they're just flakes. It looks like, I don't know, it smells like cheese, but it's not, it actually doesn't even smell like cheese. Like some people say that, and now I say that apparently, but it's not true. So yeah, these are yeast flakes. Basically they've got B12, um, zinc, folic acid, fiber, protein, and you can drink it. You can pop it on top of your meals. It adds some flavor, it adds some texture, it adds some, obviously the, the, the micronutrients as well. And I really recommend this because you can chuck it in a bag and just have it whenever. I mean, you can even chow on it dry if you're that desperate. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, but yeah, I love this stuff and it's, it's pretty affordable. It's usually two, two pound or so, a little bit more maybe um, per pot but yeast flakes are the way forward. And that's just getting in that little plug of B12 because basically, you know, most people say you can only get B12 in animal sources. That's true, but a lot of animal sources are so poor that the source of B12 in there is, is minimal. But anyway, if you're just living entirely off a, B, a vegan or a plant-based diet, then getting your B12 in there, you know, you know, you can supplement it easy enough, B12, B6, whatever, or you can take some yeast flakes. Winning, and that is that. <laughs> So I'm doing something I never do and having a fizzy drink because I'm going to need some sugar because I have to keep walking. <laughs> that's the final place to round this up is you know we've talked about hiking and through hiking there's a word I've mentioned and that is travel so when you're traveling internationally it might involve long flights or train journeys or car journeys just being prepared if you're uncertain if you're going to be able to pick things up along the way so bringing like bunches of bananas or nut butters or <laughs> oat, um, rice cakes or oat cakes whatever it is just so you've got food trail mixes to, to snack on and keep yourself sort of fueled and, and, and going basically. <laughs> but the other thing I wanted to just drop in is if you are going international, it's likely you're gonna dip in and out of other cultures, other ways that people operate. And often the, the food systems, which are very precious to people, are based upon animal products, whether it's meat or fish or, or dairy, whatever it is. And I think it's so important to stay open and respectful for that. And that's why I'm deliberately sort of steering I'm dropping it in, but steering away from it is the word vegan. I'm, I have a plant-based diet and I think a plant-based diet is the way to go because it has that flexibility and that fluidity in order to maintain respect and openness for when you're traveling and there's there are limited options available to you. Because if you're going somewhere and there is nothing that's plant-based, you're either gonna end up hungry or really upset. <laughs> so I think just acknowledging that to yourself and researching ahead is gonna make for a much better trip wherever you end up going. So that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know there's been a lot here, but I wanted to throw a lot here because I wanted to try and cover every sort of corner of different options and avenues you can go down if you're looking to introduce a more compassionate diet for your traveling and your backpacking. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions or things you'd like to be explored further, then definitely leave it in the comments below. I'm gonna go chase that pheasant now. But um, until next time, enjoy your adventures, enjoy your food and stay wild. I'll see you soon.